Rick, welcome back. Um, we are talking today a lot about what's happening and how, in general, and I think you summed it up better than I could have uh, when we discussed this with with, uh, with Will this morning, which is this new project we've launched today, For the Love of God, Save Our Country, which is going to be a special event film by or a special event by ACLJ Films. It's going to come out on Halloween, October 31st. That is just five days before the general election because we know that there is a deep spiritual darkness and heaviness um, that really connects to all ACLJ issues, every issue that we touch, uh, and we could see it more. And I feel like now, more than it maybe ever has been, it is really, really on public display. You know, a better person uh, to have on this show than me is my mom, <laughs> because my mom every day calls or texts and tells me that we are in a spiritual battle. Uh, she sees this and, and very clearly, and, and she reminds all of her kids that what's happening in America, what's happening around the world, what's happening in Israel is all about this spiritual battle of good versus evil. And I believe it, I see it, and I, I see what's happening um, in, in our schools, for instance. We've kind of sat by and allowed our schools for the past 20 years to deteriorate to the point where now uh, we we really are teaching our kids to hate America, hate the Bible, hate Christianity, hate Judeo-Christian values. And that's concerning to me. That's very concerning to me. I, I think that one of the reasons I joined ACLJ is because of this deep-rooted Judeo-Christian value-based system where we look for ways to help. We look for ways to try to get America and uh, policies around the world at the UN or the ICC. We, we try to bring in our world perspective because I believe this fight that we're having, uh, we need to be involved. We can't sit back and just watch this spiritual battle. We've got to pray, we've got to give, we've got to be vocal. Uh, Rick, I wanted to ask this, Jordan, about to how the world sees us. So when these protests are happening at our top universities from coast to coast, and uh, they can't be shut down. Columbia thought it would take a week. It's now, they don't even know when they'll be able to return uh, to campus. I mean, they've gone fully remote, maybe for the rest of the entire uh, semester. I mean, that's a lot, uh, it's, uh, again, even for, to the summer. They don't know what to do yet. I mean, their police can't handle it. Riot police in other schools. This is playing right into the hands of our enemies around the world. This is what they want to see. They want to see these pro-Hamas students taking over well, well-known well worldwide institutions in the United States as if this is the norm, as if this is the mainstream, and I'm sure that's how they're portraying it across the country, in their countries and around the world, as that this is the norm and the mainstream in America. You know, last week I hosted uh, Liz Truss, uh, the former British prime minister uh, here in California for a book party. She's got a new book out. And we talked about this exact thing. And she, she was saying, you know, what's happening on the college campuses in America will, uh, you know, take three, six months to start permeating in college campuses and universities around the world. That she already sees some of the evidence uh, in Great Britain where the same fight is beginning to happen. I, look, I, I think that we've got to be very vigilant right now because what happens in America, uh, our friends, allies, and others are watching and emulating and and trying to see how we uh, combat it. So this has got global impact. I, I do say that as I travel the world, there's a lot of uh, friends, allies, and others who are rooting for uh, the conservatives in America. They don't want to see this woke ideology take over. They still believe that if America can have this uh, this push for Judeo-Christian values, uh, and, and even the Arab governments believe this, that, that if we can have this um, conservative viewpoint in America, that then the rule of law, democracy, capitalism becomes the, the shining beacon for the rest of the world, and they like that. Uh, to me, this is ultimately, it, it is about, I mean, the, the biggest battles, when you when you see what's happened at our college campuses, 
when you see what our young people are being indoctrinated with, when you see, again, the images that look like you're seeing them from some other part of the world, but we're not. We're seeing them here in our own country, and it's coast to coast. School to school, campuses in the Northeast, uh, Ivy League, down in the Southeast, uh, to the West Coast, uh, that, uh, again, we don't want to lose an entire culture uh, to this evil that is somehow drawn in to the violence of Hamas on October 7th and drawn in to the violence of the Islamic Republic of Iran when they tried to strike Israel with those thousands of drones. Look, I, I can't help but think as you're talking about uh, the fact that elections have consequences, we have bad policies that come out when uh, elections turn sour. And funding Iran, for instance, creates wars. Uh, showing weakness creates wars. An open border creates chaos and terrorists in our country. Um, this is the, the evil that is infecting not only America and American policies, but the world, and we need to be ready for battle here. Um, you know, we weren't promised to be the greatest nation in the history of the world forever. Ronald Reagan warned us, every single generation has to fight for their freedom. And this is our fight, this is our fight. And I would say to people, are you ready? Are you battle tested? Are you weary and not able to, to withstand the onslaught? But we need to guard ourselves with prayer and we need to uh, be ready for this spiritual battle because it's an absolute spiritual battle between good and evil.